Hello everyone, first and foremost I would like to thank you for the opportunity to give this presentation. My name is Francisco Peeta, I'm a PhD student from the University of Coimbra and I'll be presenting our research paper that concerns the evaluation performance analysis of several genetic programming frameworks. This presentation is organized as follows. First, I'll provide a quick summary of what we aim to achieve as well as the main motivations behind the work being presented. Then, the two main approaches to speed up the fitness evaluation process in genetic programming are presented. We follow up by introducing TensorGP, a genetic programming engine that we developed and considered in our benchmarks. I'll also go over our methodology where the problem, considered frameworks and standardization efforts are detailed. Then, I'll discuss the results from our comparative study. And finally, the main conclusions of our work are presented along with some pointers for future work. As we know, genetic programming is a power subfield of evolutionary computation that aims to evolve a set of computer programs in a process of continuous optimization. One of the main advantages commonly attributed to genetic programming lies in the representation of candidate solutions through expressions. This representation is useful because it means that we do not need any domain-specific information of a problem in order to approximate its optimal solution. However, Genetic programming is also known for being computationally expensive, especially when it comes to fitness evaluation. Considering how crucial evaluation speeds are for genetic programming, in this work, we provide a comprehensive study on the performance differences of various frameworks using different iterative and parallel data implementations. Amongst other widely used frameworks, we analyze TensorGP, a novel genetic programming framework that we developed to take advantage of the TensorFlow library and speed up the fitness evaluation phase. Even though some attempts have been made to standardize benchmarks within genetic programming, there is still no defined testing suit or methodology to extensively compare the speed of genetic programming frameworks. Moreover, achieving commensurable results between frameworks with different features is often infeasible. For this reason, the current body of work focused on uh, comparing genetic programming systems is scarce. In this work, we try to overcome this trend by tackling some of the standardization challenges involved and while also comparing several genetic programming approaches. There are two main methods commonly used to accelerate the fitness evaluation phase in genetic programming. The first one is the caching of intermediate evaluation results and the second consists in the vectorization of the evaluation domain. The goal of the first method is to save the results from the execution of parts of individuals to avoid re-executing those parts not only when evaluating other programs but also in the following generations. This method is quite useful because the evolutionary process promotes the transmission of highly fit individuals or parts thereof and more often than not, variants of these same individuals appear several times across generations. In turn, the second method aims to abstract the process of domain evaluation with one single vectorized operation. This abstraction layer can be useful because, on the one hand, it ignores the overhead caused by iterating through the set of fitness cases, and on the other, it takes advantage of the parallelization capabilities of modern CPUs and GPUs. As said, one of the lesser-known frameworks considered in our study is TensorGP. We initially developed TensorGP with the aim of providing a robust system for seamlessly integrating domain vectorization in genetic programming. To achieve this, we took advantage of the TensorFlow library as it is um, allowed and for a straightforward implementation of the aforementioned speedup techniques. On the one hand, besides supporting data vectorization, TensorFlow also provides several graph abstractions that can be applied to the caching of intermediate results in genetic programming. On the other hand, one of tens TensorFlow design goals is to make the distribution of computational efforts seamless, which avoids the need for several hardware-specific implementations. Most genetic programming systems described in literature follow a typical evolutionary pipeline, such as the one shown in the slide. TensorGP follows this very same approach, with the only difference being the evaluation of the fitness case domain, which is vectorized using tensor operations. 
This way, what differentiates TensorGP from other genetic programming engines lies in the genotype to phenotype translation pipeline. From the scheme, we can observe that the process to execute an individual in our engine consists of three main steps. The first is transforming the expression representation from a string to a tree graph. Uh, TensorFlow then transforms our tree representation into a directed acyclic graph, which avoids the reevaluation of pieces of identical individuals. Finally, we execute the tensor operations defined in the TensorFlow graph in order to generate our phenotype, which is a tensor. It is worth remembering that throughout this pipeline we are working with tensors that contain the whole evaluation domain rather than one single data point. Moving on to the methodology section, I will start by presenting the genetic programming systems considered in this study. In total, seven frameworks were compared. These frameworks can be divided into two categories, the ones that vectorize the evaluation domain, those are TensorGP and CaroGP, and the remaining ones that perform iterative evaluation. Regarding the iterative frameworks, we try to maximize the diversity of approaches that these systems represent, while also choosing the most widespread amongst the research community. Deep Evolving Objects and ECG are arguably the most popular evolutionary computation frameworks that are employed in most of the research made in the field of genetic programming. Additionally, Deep along with GPLearn represent al alternatives that allow for the quick prototyping of controlled evo evolutionary environments with little implementation efforts. We also chose to include TinyGP, a more minimalistic but classic genetic programming implementation that can be used out of the box. Concerning the vectorized systems, we analyze TensorGP, which we already detailed, and we include CaroGP, a similar engine also using TensorFlow that was already applied to some genetic programming applications. Genetic programming entails stochastic processes that are simulated using random number generators, which are application specific. What this means is that experimental runs running in different uh, engines will inevitably follow distinct evolutionary paths and consequently perform a different number of genetic programming operations, which in turn affects computational times. However, in an effort to level the playfield and achieve comparable results, some modifications were made to the existing frameworks regarding features we can control. First, all frameworks were modified to evaluate over a linear space domain of data points. This was done in order to ease the evaluation of the larger domains in our experimentation. Additionally, we opted to implement ephemeral random constants across the board, and lastly, the ability to define genetic programming operations of variable arity was incorporated in the frameworks that lacked this feature. As a side note, all frameworks were given the freedom to use their own implementations of initialization methods and genetic operators. All experimentation concerned the approximation of the Pagey polynomial. We chose this function because it is widely regarded as being a difficult symbolic regression problem to approximate. The setup used consists in the evaluation of 50 individuals initialized with a ramped half and half method for depths ranging from 1 to 10. The evolutionary process was executed for 50 generations with a tournament size of 3 and the elite size of 1. Moreover, all experiments were run 30 times. To determine speeds at different domain sizes, we defined the square domain within a constant range and 7 domain sizes of increasing resolution, with each domain size having 4 times the amount of evaluation points than the previous. In addition to all the frameworks tested, um, TensorGP was run on both uh, a CPU and the GPU to better understand how are the limitations impact genetic programming. More importantly, we should see this comparison in terms of how much time it will take to execute the same setup across all frameworks considered. Concerning our experimentation, we now present the results for the speed comparison benchmark across frameworks. The total execution time for all approaches across different domain sizes is presented in the slide. To avoid confusion, we will refer to each domain size analyzed as a test set and to each line as an approach, because TensorGP was benchmarked twice on CPU and then on GPU. 
Because the domain size is considered in some test sets encompass a wide range of values, we chose a logarithmic scale to better represent such numbers. All values not shown in the figure were excluded, either due to memory limitations or due to execution time exceeding one hour on average. As we can infer from the graph, a tendency towards the vectorized approaches, CaruGP and TensorGP, starts to become evident for the evaluation of larger domains. CaruGP differs from TensorGP in the sense that it explicitly builds an intermediate graph to compile genetic programming operations, which adds overhead to the evaluation process. However, even though CaruGP falls behind other iterative frameworks for smaller domains, the graph building overhead eventually pays off by the fifth test set with over 1 million data points. In the next table, we can see the same results with both average and standard deviation values for the executed experimental runs. As it is highlighted in the table, we can verify that both TensorGP approaches running in CPU and GPU are faster from the second test set onwards. This is partially due to the fact that TensorGP runs in the eager execution mode of TensorFlow that executes tensor operations immediately rather than compiling them as a graph like uh, CaruGP. This is shown to be beneficial in the context of the evolutionary process. Additionally, TensorGP on GPU was the only approach to finish runs on the allocated time slot for the last test set with 16 million data points. Another interesting property verified for vectorized approaches is that they don't exhibit linear behavior for the first test sets. In fact, the overhead of dealing with tensor data is so overwhelming for smaller domains that these approaches spend most time building and moving tensors rather than executing genetic programming operations. Moving on to the analysis of the iterative approaches, as expected, uh, all approaches demonstrated linear-like behavior from the start. We can see a clear performance dominance with DCG, only giving up this lead to evolving objects for the second test set. In turn, evolving objects generally perform closely behind ECG. Even though TinyGP is written in Java like ECG, its performance falls short of this framework. However, we must remind ourselves that TinyGP is mostly meant as an academic exercise and not as a full genetic programming system. We also show that JPLearn falls short of meeting the defined time limits by the fifth test set revealing overall similar performance numbers when compared to TinyGP. Lastly, DEEP is shown to be the slowest framework across the board, only completing the first three test sets. So, to conclude, we found that TensorGP achieves faster execution times within the same control setup when compared to the considered frameworks. Specifically, we showed that speedups of up to 100 times are feasible when comparing TensorGP to the most popular frameworks that perform iterative evaluation. We also demonstrated that the performance increase verified for vectorized frameworks is more prominent for the evaluation of larger domain sizes and when run on dedicated hardware such as the GPU. However, we must take these results into perspective, remembering that only the time taken to execute the setup was measured. For instance, DEEP was shown to be the slowest framework, but it also proved to be one of the easiest to integrate our setup with. This shows that every framework has its strong suits and no system is a good fit for all scenarios. Concerning future work, we believe this study should be extended to include multiple problems, not restricted to symbolic regression, but also in the classification and predictive modeling domains. Also, because TensorGP performance enables the execution of more demanding setups, we plan on the exploring the influence of individuals with higher depths. Lastly, the inclusion of more complex problems and experimental setups with real-world applications should be considered as this provides invaluable insights to the applicability and usefulness of genetic programming systems. Okay, so below are the GitHub links for both TensorGP and the source code for this project. Uh, you can find more about TensorGP by reading our post in the site of Computational Design and Visualization Lab of CISU. Finally, if you want to use TensorGP in your research, we are available to provide any technical support. And in this way, I finish my presentation. Thank you for your time.